What's up guys? Welcome back to another day of eating keto and getting the move your body challenge going along with some push-ups and some dips on my walk. So today I thought I would um, walk you through another day of eating and just to show you what I'm doing. I am not used to this brown hair yet. <laughs> And sorry, I don't have any makeup on because when I go exercise, the last thing I want is to be sweating makeup. So I am one of those that I work out makeup free. So sorry, <laughs> I'll look better in a little bit. But anyways, I will show you, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you today's outfit. So this is what I'm working out in today. One of these days I'll be... Um, confident enough to actually work out in a sports bra but today's not that day <laughs> so i like these vet um, leggings because they got pockets so i have to put my phone in one of the pockets and um and then i'll put like just random stuff in the other one but pockets are a must and the hula hoop is because my kids come in here and use the hula hoop <laughs> so don't judge but anyways we're gonna grab some electrolytes to put in our water and and then we'll be off getting our five miles in uh, my goal this week is 15 miles so by the end of this week i hope that i will have 30 miles logged <laughs> so let me grab my water and we're supposed to get a cold front today so tomorrow the high temperature the high here in north texas it's gonna be 70 like three so i'm really excited about that <laughs> okay so i have my water that's been sitting in the fridge overnight um getting cold i need two hands to take that off <laughs> okay so all i'm gonna do is add a scoop Ooh, fill that up right to the top <laughs> put my cover on shake it up and it is time to go now i need some help from you guys I need some shoes to walk in. These ones are just plain Adidas walking shoes and I need to know what shoes you all recommend for me because I have been wanting to get a new pair of shoes for a while, but with the pandemic currently right now, I can't go like try on shoes like I used to. So I don't want to go to a bunch of stores. My feet have changed since I last you know, went shopping. <laughs> um, they're smaller, but they still have a wide foot. So like, I really do need to go try them on. Um, I, have, I have a real high arch as well, which is another hard thing when you have shoes to like try and fit. I call my foot a hobbit's foot because it's so, I, it's a size nine, but because it's so wide, I usually always size up and get tens. So <laughs> I call my hobbit's foot a hobbit's foot. So anyways, if you have a pair of shoes that you recommend or a brand, um, I pre in previous years I've always been an a what do you call it Asics not Asics Adidas um, and New Balance have been my two favorites. Um, if those are still good, recommend a brand for me to try on, and I may even order a bunch of shoes off of Amazon and try it that way. But either way, you have to protect your feet when you're walking like five miles, and my feet need some good new shoes. So comment below if you have a recommendation for me. If you're an expert. So, but anyways, let's go get our five mile walk in and I'll see you back here at lunchtime. basically the neighbor's house and now it's time to make dinner so um, if you hear kids in the background sorry <laughs> they're trying to find the cat it's been it's real exciting so anyways we have ground turkey 
Um, I use uh, eggs to soften, or I mean, to make my meatloaf. I'm making a turkey meatloaf. I have corn on the cob for my kids, and our side is going to be asparagus. And I'm going to dice up a white onion. I put cheese in there and a little um, almond flour and spices. So let me open this all up, and we'll get started on the turkey meatloaf. Okay, so I have a little helper with me, and she's going to help me make some meatloaf. So I need you to scoop me some cheese. I have three pounds of ground turkey. I'll change the camera angle in a second, but I'm going to add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Goodness, you can't open this. <laughs> it's childproof. <laughs> Goodness. Scooby. All right, I need you to scoop one of those in here. So three pounds of ground turkey. You don't need to use ground turkey. You can, um, it's close enough. You can do ground beef. You can do ground pork. You could do ground chicken. Um, meatloaf is pretty flexible. So, um, so you do you. The next, I'm gonna need a half cup of almond flour. Can you give me a scoop in here? Goes away. Wait, let's shake that, get a little bit more. Yeah, that's probably enough. All right, so there's a half cup of almond flour. And that just kind of helps hold it together. And then do you want to shake about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. In the meantime, I'll do the garlic powder. So give that a good shake. That's going to take you a while. <laughs> We're going to put about a half tea. All right, that's good. <laughs> about a half teaspoon. Let me put the camera angle down here. About a half teaspoon of garlic. Oh, my goodness, we're dropping stuff. How do you get that? <laughs> Instead of chopping up a white onion, I'm going to use onion powder. Um, it just makes the texture a little smoother and more kid-friendly. This is a jumper. <laughs> it's a jumper. All right, and I'm going to do another probably half teaspoon of onion powder. And then we need salt and pepper. Let me get you something to scoop that with. I'm looking for a teaspoon. All right, there's a teaspoon. So do that in the pink salt. One teaspoon, make sure it's nice and full. All right, and then dump that in here. Good job. <laughs> and a half teaspoon of pepper. Switch to this one. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. Shake that, there you go, perfect. Now put that in there. And because we have three pounds of ground turkey, I'm gonna do three eggs. So I, usually tip, I typically do one egg per pound of meatloaf. So hit, hit it on the side or the counter. A little bit harder. These are real good egg shells. You might do it again until it cracks. One more time. <laughs> hit it. Don't be afraid of it. Good job. All right, now put the egg in there and I'll take your shell. Oh, it's going to splatter everywhere. <laughs> I'll spin it back. Great job. You did it. <laughs> you want to go run and wash your hands? I don't do that. You can use, the, okay, I'll do the last one and I'll come join you. So three eggs. What are you doing, silly? You want your step stool? No, I got it. <laughs> so while my hands are dirty, I'm going to take off my ring because I don't like to mix it. We're washing hands in the background. So while my rings are off and while my hands are dirty, I'm going to quickly mix the meatloaf and get it all nice and incorporated. And it's such an easy recipe. We're gonna make a bunch of recipes off of the leftovers. Um, the options are endless when it comes to meatloaf leftovers. So I'm gonna have you get me a pan out. Your hands are nice and clean and mine are dirty. Okay, what kind of pan do you want me to Um, I have to think about where the cabinet it's in. <laughs> I need my meatloaf pan, pan. I think it's on the other side of this counter. Be on the other side of me in the island. Um, it's a long and skinny pan. And there's two of them. Why? Like this one? Nope, not that one's flat and skinny. A little like um, tall and skinny and narrow. Okay. What looks narrow? It's like a brown pan with a silver inside. Crash! Crash, crash! 
Okay, so we just took some avocado oil spray. Oh, candy and we're going to put our three pounds of meatloaf, roughly a pound and a half, in each meatloaf pan. And then I'm going to have you put ketchup on the top. Yes! <laughs> this is one of the ketchups I buy from Thrive Market and also locally you can find it at our grocery stores like Sprouts and I think Kroger carries this. Um, so I'm just going to put that on the top as like a glaze. So I'm also going to, um, I'm going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna pour these in here. What are you doing, you silly girl? And roughly half in each loaf pan. Whoa, that one almost went I in. I probably could have fit two in there, but I'm not, we'll see. Let's spread it out. It'll cook faster if we make it smaller, so we'll go that route. So I'm just gonna spread it so it's nice and flat. Wait. You're gonna, ketchup, ketchup, ketchup. you're gonna pour half that ketchup oh my God. on this. Half of the rest of it. Yeah, half ketchup. of that. You know what? I, you know, um, have we done half yet in school? <laughs> yeah. No. No, you haven't done half. Do you know what half means? Like half of the day. Half is. of it. Half of the bottle. So if there's, yeah. if it's full, this would be half, right? So. Here's yours, and I need you to put half on here. And if you get it all, or if it's too much, don't worry. It's made with love. And depending... <laughs> it's like just dripping. <laughs> and you know the flame is everywhere. You don't? Who are you? My, my kid would have flung it everywhere. <laughs> Oh my god, this is going slow. <laughs> all right, stop for a sec. Put, um, I think you put all of it on here, but we'll see. If there's any extra, hang it on that one. I'm going to spread this on across the top. And it's, like it's sugar-free ketchup. If I didn't mention that, I might have skipped that part. <laughs> but it just gives it a little bit of flavor. Um, I've made this variation where I've put peppers and onions and, and sauteed them first, oh then gosh, put it in. It's okay. Um, and then, or you go like the pepper or the ground spices route. So this is a more simple, don't lick it, don't lick it, because where did you find that? <laughs> On the counter, okay. Don't lick it if it's touched the meat. <laughs> We're going to have salmonella poisoning our hands. All right, that's okay. So this one only got a little bit, but you know what? It's okay. It'll still taste fine. And I think... Who wants to see the cat? Who wants to see the cat? You want to go get the kitty? Yeah, I'm proud. I think I have. There we go. I just need a little bit more muscle. <laughs> Sorry to like fight, but there she is. Nice cinder. She's such a good kitty. She likes to be picked up. I've never had a cat that you can actually hold up. Yeah. All right, all right we're going to drop her. Put Get down. There you go. We don't want to drop the kitty. She's so cute. All right, what do you think of Cinder? She's a dog, I love picking this cat. I know, but she's a really good temperament on a cat, has a really good temperament on a cat. Right, oh now. my gosh, she's up on the chair. It's okay. She's like, All right, yeah. take a break. <laughs> I can't believe you. And uh, I got her on my shirt. Yeah, I know, she, that's right, you're wearing her on your shirt. The yeah, kitty right. shirt. Yeah. So we're gonna pop these finished meatloaves into the oven for, I'm gonna check We're on the- We're showing the finished product too. We'll show you the finished product in about 30 minutes. Or yeah, I'm, I'm having corn on my You're having corn? Yeah, we got, I told them about your corn. I, I will show you. Grab it. I love corn! <laughs> All right, next thing we have to wash our hands, okay? So let's go wash our hands again and we'll be back in a few. We'll be back in 20. 20? Yeah, 30. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make our asparagus. So I took the asparagus and just cut it into three. Um, and then the same thing, you know, cut it here. I cut it 
into three because it just makes it easier to bite. Um, it's fibrous, so it just it can get little chewy or stringy when you're eating it. So because my kids like to eat this, I typically will cut it like this. Um, if my kids didn't like it, I would just leave it whole. <laughs> but because it's just easier and safer to make sure nobody chokes, um, I cut my asparagus into smaller pieces and it actually cooks a little quicker too. So all we're gonna do is take some avocado oil, measure it. We're gonna do two tablespoons of avocado oil and then whoop, salt and pepper and pop it in the oven with the meatloaf. Salt. Ooh, made a big mess here. <laughs> and pepper. And sometimes when it comes out of the oven, I'll put a little squeeze of lemon juice on there, but that's an optional step. I've also sprinkled Parmesan cheese across the top as well. So I use my hands and mix because I like a little conditioning treatment on my hands. <laughs> sometimes it just you mix things mix better when you use your hands. So look away to the food police. <laughs> All right, now spread everything out evenly and then pop it in the oven. It's going to be at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. The, the meatloaf's been in, the, in there for about 10 already. So I'm going to put this in the oven and I'll meet you back here with the finished product. We are going to plate everything. The asparagus came out delicious. And there is the meatloaf. Um, I'm going to have about six ounces of uh, meatloaf and roughly about four ounces or so, a little over of asparagus. So that's dinner. <laughs>